Hi everyone, today I'm going to colour this lovely little um, picture from Johanna Basford's book Flourish. Um, I'm going to use Stedler Ergosoft pencils, I've just noticed I need to sharpen a few. I'm going to pause the video and then come back to you. Right, I'm back with my pencils all primed and ready to go. So I'm firstly going to concentrate on these two, this lovely pair here and um, I'm going to go for a sort of dark blue and purple colouring. This is number 33 which is the darkest blue and I'm just going to make a start with it. Now there are all sorts of different colours for mushrooms and toadstools that we could do and uh, I just like having fun with them really. I think they're really lovely pretty things to colour and they don't always have to be a, a colour that you would find in nature but actually if you go onto your search engine and look at what colours they are in nature it's amazing what you find there's so many beautiful colours and neon tones and things like that now what I'm doing with this one is I've decided I'm going to have it darker on this side so I'm going over and over this side to get a more intense colour and then lightening it up as I go towards this side but I think there would also be some shadow over this bit this overlappy sort of bit as well. I'm going to do the same on this one, they're going to match they, they look so much the same I think they need to be the same colour but of course you may decide you just want them different So you can see I'm doing more layers on top of each other here. I'm trying not to press harder here than here too much, but rather just put more layers of colour on. And for the top part, I'm going to use purple. This is number six purple. And I'm going to do the light would be falling in the same way so again it will be darker on this side some more layers on this side and then lightening up towards the middle I'm often tempted to leave this sort of bit white I don't know why whether that's something I've seen in nature or not I don't know but um, I've decided to make it nice and colourful today and I'm going to do the stalk in this colour as well and I'm going to do it darker here where there will be some shadow from the from underneath and then lighter down towards the bottom the same again here darker here and then lighter towards the bottom and they've got these four little teeny weeny ones underneath and I'm going to do these in this number 61 I'm going to try and do the same thing with the darker here and lighter across. It's harder when they're little, but you can still do it if you've got a nice sharp pencil. Hence the need for sharpening. There we go. Now we've got, looking at these leaves, I think this group of leaves is a different colour to the ones on this side. So that's how I'm going to colour it anyway. So on this side I'm going to use number 52 to start with. Uh, first you're just going to colour in this thick stalky bit. It's just a solid colour. And what I'm going to do is colour the bottoms and fade towards the ends and I'm going to bring in a, the lighter green for the ends of the leaves. So I'm basically doing more layers of colour and pressing a little bit harder here and then just fading it up by reducing the pressure on the pencil and just doing the one layer of colour. And it takes practice to do this so that you don't get a line. I still do sometimes, especially on a smaller space. But it's worth practising and having a go because it can look really effective once you've mastered it and if you sort of persevere at it. So it's the same technique all the way up the, the plant. Now something I've been doing lately, actually ever since I started colouring I've suddenly become much more observant of nature and colours and the way light falls on things and I noticed that 
although I always have the habit of colouring one particular tree, plant, whatever, with exactly the same colour leaves throughout, that is not what happens in nature at all. And most trees, bushes, etc. have a variety of different colours. I'm going to use number 56 to finish off the leaves. Um, they have a variety of different colours through the tree. So really doing, I'm, I'm doing the whole colour all over the whole leaf to blend it back through. Um, so although we're always tempted to do it the same colour and somehow it feels the right way to do it, it's actually not what is happening in nature. And especially at this time of year, it's autumn and things are changing colour, it tends the colour change on the tree can spread from the top to the bottom or the bottom to the top or there can be a few old branches that have changed and others that haven't and that can be quite interesting but nevertheless you see I'm just doing this whole thing in the same way I think that's every leaf done yeah there we go and this side these are a little bit smaller so I think I'm only going to use one colour make it a little bit easier for myself and I'm going to use number five and this is a darker green I'm still going to lighten it towards the tip but I'm going to go all the way up to the end so we don't have any space left you can leave a bit of white and I think if you're doing a background colour leaving some white is very effective but if you have a white if you're leaving the background white then it doesn't stand out in quite the same way but you can experiment and see what you think works for you in the pictures that you do ok just these as well as I said we can do them all the same and then we've got these little flowers to do now I've been thinking about the colour now I'm going to go for this pink now this to me is a slightly more salmony pink, slightly more orangey. It doesn't look it in the in the uh, camera, but that's how I feel. So I tend not to mix it together with my other pinks, but I really like the colour. Now what I'm doing with this is I'm applying more layers nearer the the top here of the flower and making it lighter towards the bottom of the petal. I just feel the colour might be more intense on the petal. It's not to do with the light, but in some plants you notice that it's more got more intense colour towards the centre. And all and although the light would hit it here, that's why I've chosen to do it this way. There we go. And we need to do those. And of course I feel that that needs to be yellow. But I don't think yellow is going to match that colour that I've done. So I'm going to go do something a bit different. Number nine, black. Now I'm not going to do it a pure dark hard black. I'm going to start off dark at the bottom and lighten it as I go up. There we go. Oops. Now, I feel that this calls for a little bit of a background, this picture. We've got all these little dots, and I quite like to do those in a colour, um, in maybe in white or something. But what colour background do we need? And I'm thinking, I just want it to be a nice light colour. So I'm going to pick just this blue, and I'm just going to do a light colouring all over. Now, I find that with backgrounds it's really better to start off really lightly because if you start having an uneven tone across the page it can be really hard to sort of rescue it and make it look flat. If you do it lightly like this and you miss a few bits it can just look like that was intentional like it's cloud or something but that if you try and make it all look like it's one flat colour then you've got to make it look like one flat colour and that can be tricky and that's why a lot of people might use a Posca pen for a background or even but, um, now you could try a normal marker or felt pen but I find that it can have a sort of stripy look to it somehow um, it's hard to describe but 
when you're using a pen if you go over the top of a bit you've done already that bit gets darker so you get a darker bit and then the bit you haven't gone over several times is lighter and uh, that really shows with a Posca pen you don't get that because it's paint it behaves in a very different way to a, a felt tip pen and so they can be a lot better it's much much easier to get your even tone of colour as long as you cover every piece of paper with a bit of the paint then you get a lovely dark um, even colour across the whole page and uh, that can be very satisfying and the pens are quite easy to come by I've um, I found them in local art shops um, I go to Jackson's Art has them we've got a local one we're very lucky but they have a website um, obviously Amazon has everything in the world that you might ever need um, <laughs> and uh, other places like that do try and support your local art shops if you can though local businesses are really struggling little small businesses okay so I've done that blue it's quite faint it may not even show up very well but I'm I'm happy with it being quite light I'm just touching it up you see I just did not sort of even all over now we've got these dots now I think if I do those in white they just won't show up so what I'm going to do is something a bit different I'm going to use I've got this Posca and it's blue um, it's there it's just called blue and it's the 0.7 very fine tip I'm just going to shake it and I'm going to use that to emphasize these dots in the sky if it writes there we go to make it just look a little bit more magical Now, there are some other paint pens available. Um, Stedler do them, and I was very curious, as I used the Stedler pencils a lot, to see what they were like. So I've ordered one, and I've got it, and I'm really excited. It's been put away for Christmas because it's not a present for now, so I shall be testing that out, and I shall do a little review of it at some point, um, but it will have a while to wait yet, because we're nowhere near Christmas. But uh, anyway, that's me done with that picture. Now I hope you like it, obviously a different idea for the background, you could do a black background with white dots or you could have done pink dots, I think it's always nice to pick out a colour from the picture to do in your sky, you could do a mixture of colours, so I could have done some pink dots and some purple dots as well, but I think I thought about that after and I think there's enough dots, if I did more it might just look a bit strange <laughs> anyway that's done i hope you enjoyed that one um thank you very much for watching and happy coloring